We welcome those who join us in live stream also. Tonight we're in the 82nd exposition of Genesis. We'll be finishing with the text itself tonight. I have a, a few more uh, things after this that will tie together how the Genesis is recognized and used throughout the rest of the scriptures and how it is a foundation. We'll expound some of that, particularly Paul's use of it next time. So we're in the 50th chapter of... Uh, Genesis, Jacob has just died. They've buried him in Canaan, they, and they've gone back to Egypt. And we pick up the text there in verse 15 of chapter 50 through the end of the chapter. <clears throat> and when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph will peradventure hate us and will certainly requite us all the evil which we did unto him. And they sent a messenger unto Joseph, saying, Thy father did command before he died, saying, So shall you say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren and their sin, for they did unto thee evil. And now we pray thee, forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake to him. And his brethren also went and fell down before his face, and they said, Behold, we be thy servants. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, you thought it evil against me. You thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Now therefore fear ye not, I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. And Joseph dwelt in Egypt, he and his father's house. And Joseph lived an hundred and ten years. And Joseph saw Ephraim's children of the third generation, the children also of Machir, the son of Manasseh, were brought up upon Joseph's knees. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I die, and God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land unto the land which he sware to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And Joseph took an oath of the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and ye shall carry up my bones from hence. So Joseph died, being 110 years old, and they embalmed him, and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. Amen. Now I once again want to point out the divine manner of reporting the lives of his people. I do this because this I don't think this is generally observed. I don't think very many people have actually picked up on this. But God doesn't provide the kind of details a biographer would. This is because the life of man, with the single exception of Jesus Christ, is not the primary point with God. Now this has got to, this has got to sink down into people's hearts. Men are not that important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They are incidental. Yeah. Amen. That's the way it really is. God was, there's a lot of, we don't know what all went on before the world was, but there's a lot of activity that, before there was men. So you ought, to, you ought to be able to conclude this. This shouldn't have to be hard to figure this out. Yeah. That if you've got an eternal God, that at some point focused on men, that men can't be like the main thing. That's, that's not, that shouldn't be that hard to figure out. As elementary as it may seem, and, and men do have a difficult time with this, 
They can't inculcate this into their thinking. Mm -hmm. About the time you think God thinks you're that important, you're off. You're off on the bypass. This yeah. is not. This is not the case. This is not. I want to be emphatic about it. Yeah. This is not the case. Yeah. When it comes to men, it's the man. Yeah. And men under that are ranked by how they were used. Abraham, yeah. Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, the prophets, John the Baptist, mm -hmm. the apostles. See, they're ranked by how close they were to God and how they were employed in God's purpose. That's how they're ranked so far as God is concerned. Before any progress can be made in spiritual life, these things have got to be perceived and received that I am not the main person. Yeah. How could you take up your cross and follow Christ? How could you not take up your cross and follow Christ mm -hmm. unless you do that you weren't the main person? Yeah. Uh -huh. Why would any person give up mm -hmm. themselves as a priority if, mm -hmm. if they were really that important? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Given the facts in the case, what we've seen in Genesis, just, just what we've seen in Genesis, there's, we should be able to deduce several things. Mm -hmm. One, men need to be delivered by God. Yeah. That ought to be, mm -hmm. I mean, if you can't see that, you've got some real problems. Yeah. God delivers men according to his own purpose. He doesn't just go around delivering Amalekites and Canaanites and Hittites and Hivites and Romans and Egyptians. And got to see that about God. When he delivers somebody, it's according to his purpose. He doesn't, frankly, deliver everybody. And if that's not, if that's not plain in the book of Genesis, again, you really got to rehearse this. This is this book, Genesis, this is about God. He's a, this is a, a primer about God and how he acts. You should, uh, you should know this from Genesis, as well as apostolic writings, men are to present their bodies as a living sacrifice to God. Abraham, you got to get out of Ur, get into Canaan, and stay there. Yeah, amen. Mm -hmm. And Isaac, you got to stay in Canaan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Jacob, I'll let you out of Canaan, but only so you can multiply the race in Egypt. Then you got to get back into Canaan. Amen. See? Men are to present their, you have to make yourself available to God mm -hmm. for his use. Mm -hmm. And men are to do everything to the glory of God. That ought to be, yeah. it ought to be obvious. But see, this, this is not obvious in the modern church. Yeah, right. Very few percentile wise, very few people actually see this. Mm -hmm. And so they've got their own private agendas and they're living by their agendas and they're truncating their activities for God and they're limiting their lives in the spirit because they've got private agendas. They haven't picked up on this very elementary message. And God is the judge of all. If you don't live right, don't think God's going to wink his eye at it. And if you are faithful, don't think God's going to wink at that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. God is the judge of all. And the real issue is being reconciled to God. Mm -hmm. That's the real issue. If that hasn't happened, nothing else is important. Yeah. Amen. And Jesus Christ, we know now, is bringing us to God. Yeah. Because nothing's going to get done that transports over to the other world to come unless we're with God. Amen. Yeah. And you can't get to God unless somebody brings you to God. Yeah. Uh -huh. And that somebody yeah. is Christ. He's, yeah. that's, of course, that's categorically taught. Mm -hmm. First Peter 3.18, he's put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, mm -hmm. that he might bring us mm -hmm. to Amen. God. Yeah. So it's not possible to grasp the reality of these affirmations as long as men conclude mankind is the principal thing, yeah. principal people, or that the will of man is the focus of heaven. See, this, now, this is, this is the kind of day we're living in. There's been a shift in Christianity. Yeah. Some people are so obtuse they don't even know this has happened. I, 
I'm I'm I, I'm staggered at it. They live in these little uh, these little shells, you know. As my father used to say, they live in their own little world and it's very con very small and constricted. Yeah. And they don't realize that the whole face of Christianity has changed. Yet yeah. now is God fulfilling your dreams. Yeah. We'd have fell out of the pew 50 years ago yeah. if someone had said that. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Very few people thought that. Uh -huh. yeah. It was generally known that God's not in heaven serving you, but see, that's... And it's just not a few people. The greater part of Christendom is following these TV preachers. I've mentioned to this to you before that there are 2.5 billion Christians, that's all shades and varieties, in the world. 2.5 billion. Almost is 75% more than there are Muslims. It's the biggest religious group in, the, in all of the world is Christendom. And of that 2.5 billion, a billion are Roman Catholic. One billion. Uh, you may think that doesn't make a difference, but <laughs> one billion. And at least 1.5 billion. And of the 1.5 billion, there are 555 million. They call them renewal. We used to call them charismatics but they're called renewal, 555 million. Hmm? So you get your perspective. Maybe you're familiar with the, with the restoration movement, which really should be called the non-restoration movement. The restoration movement with all three groups do not quite reach three million. So now who's got the influence? And these other, these 555 million are shaping the way the non-Christians think mm -hmm. about Christianity and about Christ. Yeah. See, they're shaping how the multitudes think. Mm -hmm. God wants Genesis to shape yeah. foundational thinking yeah. Yeah. about this. Yeah, the person can actually come to the conclusion that they, they, they are and have been successful in life and not have done any of these things. I know it. I know it. <laughs> this is why God reports the lives of men in the, in the way he does. He positions these people in light of his purpose. And it makes no difference if he's talking about Adam or Cain or Abraham or Nebuchadnezzar or Judas or Herod or Paul. Mm -hmm. Whatever he says about them is in view of him and his purpose. And if someone's Unacceptable is because of their because they conflict with him. If someone's acceptable, it's because they're harmonious with him. See, this is the way it is all through all through scripture. The children of God must not view their own life as though it was the most important life. It is not. And there's not a one of you that won't be tempted to think that. Our society is calculated to make people think this way. All the advertisers, all the marketers, all the retailers, they're all mm -hmm. make a big play on this, that you, mm -hmm. you are the most, your life is the most, you only go around once, right. get all yeah. you can. You know, this. Oh, yeah. the whole world's thinking this way, and you get, if you, if a person's not fighting the good fight of faith, not walking in the spirit, he'll get caught up in this current. It's like a tidal wave. Right? And it'll you'll get caught up. You can't avoid this now. Mm -hmm. I want to be I want to be clear about this. You can't avoid this. The world will tell you what you can be. They'll assess you and say, we think you can be this, we think you can be that. We've got an elaborate uh, system. It'll cost you a tremendous amount of money, but we 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 see what you can be. You can't afford to get caught up in that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I understand that people can have professional careers. I'm not saying you can't. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying professional people are to be the most cautious of all people. Just like wealthy people, they're to be more cautious. Mm -hmm. yeah. Those that are wealthy are told, you use your riches. Be ready to distribute them. Yeah. Amen. And, and you will obtain eternal life. That's what the first, yeah. First Timothy 6, 14, I believe it is, says this. So you've got to live in view of God. See, the Abram and Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, they actually did live with God, in God consciousness. It determined where they lived. It determined what they did. It determined what, what, what they responded to what happened to them. They, they lived their total life 
in an acute kind, this is after God made himself known to them, their total life was lived with an acute consciousness of God. And so they're spoken of very highly yes, that's right. by God in Scripture. Amen. We know we know from, now what I just said, we know from apostolic doctrine undergirds this, mm -hmm. that we should in all lowliness of mind, that's the opposite of yeah. I'm the main yeah. person, with all lowliness of mind, mm -hmm. let each esteem other better than themselves. See, now you can't get anywhere in the world thinking that, but that's, mm -hmm. why is it that way? Because that's the way it is. You aren't any better than anybody. <laughs> You aren't any better. You are undeserving to be the center of attention. So if you're not, like, this is not something to be ex exercised about. Every person who's been made accepted in the beloved is not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. Yes, amen. Well, how high can you think? You can think as high as God has gifted you. Yes. And he gifts people to minister to his people. That you can think, don't think highly, more highly of yourself than you ought to think, but think soberly, yeah. according as God has distributed to every man the measure of faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That measure of faith is like spiritual gifts in 1 Corinthians 12. So you can think of yourself as that, but when you do, then you, your, your, response, your responsibility is yeah. accentuated. Now, I, I wanted to say one more word about this. Babylon the Great, we talk a lot about it, but that's because nobody else is. If everybody is talking about it, we wouldn't talk so much about it. When it falls, and God's decreed it's going to, Amen. it's so sure he said Babylon is fallen. See, he didn't even say it will fall. He said it is. See, it's been decreed. Amen. No way. You can, you can refurbish it, strengthen it, build, it, build up the structure. It won't. Now, when it fell, the response of the people that had formed a league with it tells you how close the merger yeah. it was with the world. Yes. Now here's what it says. This is a, in uh, Revelation 18, 13, 12 and 13. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her. It's Babylon is fallen. The, merchant, the merchants of the earth? Yes, the merchants of the earth shall mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more, which Babylon was one of yeah. the big buyers. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. You need to really believe this. Yeah. Right. Religious people are some of the biggest dupes yeah. Oh, yeah. in the world. Mm -hmm. The world exploits them. Mm -hmm. No one buys their merchandise anymore. The merchandise of gold, notice how broad it says, silver, Precious stones, pearls, fine linen, purple, and scarlet, silk, and scarlet, thigh and wood, all manner of vessels of ivory, all manner of vessels of most precious wood, and of brass, and of iron, and of marble, and cinnamon, and odors, or perfumes, and ointments, frankincense, and wine, and oil, and fine flour, and wheat, and beasts, and sheep, and horses, and chariots, and slaves, and souls of men. Hmm. Yeah. That's how close the alliance is between Babylon and the world. That's, that's, right. that's how cl you can't get any closer. That's right. I don't doubt that Joseph's brothers still thought of him as being trained for the position he had. Yeah. I, they didn't. They didn't. They didn't comprehend it. It's because they surmised he was just like them, but he wasn't just like them. <laughs> the hand of God was upon him, and at, at that point, you're not like. At that point, you're not like everybody else. And that doesn't mean pride. That means humility and submission. He was not like them, and that's that's precisely really why they despised him. Now Joseph is going to reason with his brothers. He'll confirm to them by what he says. He'll confirm to them how different really he was than they were. Joseph's brothers saw their father was dead. Well, what that they saw their father was dead. It means it registered on him. Uh -huh. 
If you've ever lost uh, a family member or someone close to you, you know that it takes a while before it kind of mm -hmm. settles in. That, yeah. yeah. I remember one time uh, after my wife died, I was on a business trip, and I I, I went in a jewelry store to get her a gift, but I hadn't settled in. I mean, she was gone. And all of you, you've had experiences like this with it, with mother, children. Takes a while to settle in that they're actually gone. Well, it settled in. That's what this text to say. It dawned on them. Oh, Dad's dead. I'm sure they thought that Joseph had been treating him good for Jacob's sake. I'm sure that's what they thought. And it settled in on the idea, the reality of Jacob's death come home to them. And they said, all right. <laughs> it could very well be. They said, peradventure. I mean, we would say it could very well be that Joseph's going to hate us now. Not hate us in here. Hate us like this. Uh -huh. yeah. And, and uh, other verses mean perhaps or what if he does. That's, the word peradventure means possibly or perhaps. Is the conclusion... Per adventure. That's a conclusion, in this case, based upon, no, it's not based on factual proofs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's just theorized. Uh -huh. yeah. now, a lot of thinking is like that. Mm -hmm. The conclusions are based on wrong assumptions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We hear expressions like, you know how we all are. See, that, that's a conclusion based on an assumption. <laughs> or you know what we all do. You see, that's a, that's a, that's a conclusion. That's right. And he'll requite us for all the evil. He'll, he'll pay us back now. Yeah. Only Dad was holding back. That's he'll right. pay us back now. See, now I want to, I resorted here to a little chartology. Drawing wrong conclusions. The reasoning process, see, there's a, there's a, then there's, there's these pillars. You see these cracked pillars. Mm -hmm. They're false hypotheses and assumptions. Mm -hmm. But instead of the person reasoning on the basis of the foundation, yeah. they reason on the basis of these erroneous yeah. conclusions, yeah. and so the, they come to a wrong thought, a wrong, come to a wrong conclusion up here. Now I want to give an example of this in. It has happened in theology. The church has a lot of this. Yeah. They have a lot of traditions that are really built on false assumptions mm -hmm. and erroneous hypotheses, which is a possibility thinking. Remember, that has even been vaulted since Norman Vincent Peale, possibility thinking. That if you oh, think yeah. it, yeah. think it long enough, it'll happen. Well, yeah, that's, right. that's that's erroneous. Now this. Uh, Jesus taught us that uh, the found that what you build on determines whether your house stands or not. Yeah, amen. He, he said, a man, a man that hears my words and not believes them and does them. Yeah, right. uh -huh. That means Jesus demands that you do something. Yeah, right. You got to believe. I understand that. Yeah. But believing moves you to do something. He hears these words of mine and uh -huh. doesn't do them. I'll tell you what he's like. You don't have to think about this. I'll tell you what he's like. He's like a man that built his house on the sand. Mm -hmm. Now, believe me, that house cost just as much as the house built on the rock. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Took just as much time, yeah. huh? just as much material. Uh, he built it on the sand. Yeah. What he forgot was the storms and the rain and the winds, yeah. Yeah. the floods. Yeah. Amen. When they came, the house fell, and great was the fall yeah. thereof. But whoever hears these words of mine and does them, I'll tell you what he's like. I'll tell you what he's like. You don't have to, you don't have to guess. I'm not asking you what he's like. I'm going to tell you what he's like. Yeah, yeah. He's like a man that built his house on a rock. Yeah, and when the trials and the hard times came, he, the house stood fast. Yeah, see? Amen. Now I want to show you an example of building on a bad foundation. In the scripture, there's a phrase mentioned one time. 
in all the Bible. It's mentioned one time. And the phrase is, reign with him a thousand years. It's the only time in all the Bible this is mentioned. Reign with him a thousand years. Talk about some saints. Raise with, reign with him a thousand years. Now this thousand years, we do have a little bit further information. He tells you about this mm -hmm. thousand years. Yeah. Now remember, this is a vision. This is not a, Revelation is not a book of doctrine. That's right. it's, a, it's a vision, so you can't take, when he's likened Satan to a dragon, he wasn't saying Satan's a dragon. I mean, it's not, when, he, when he likens the church to a woman, he's not saying church is a woman. Uh -huh. it's, it's a vision. Yeah, that's right. So it's the same with this thousand years. This speaks of a, of a lengthy period of time. So in Revelation 20 and verse 2, it says that, a holy angel laid hold of the dragon, that old servant which is devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. All right, so there's a little additional piece. Then we've got some more said in that same, all of this is in the 20th chapter, 20th chapter, verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them. They, as the people, were mar beheaded for Jesus' sake. That's who we're talking about. They were beheaded after they were beheaded. Saw so the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Christ and for the word of God, and, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So there, there is another piece of information. Revelation 20, verse 5 says, But the rest of the dead lived not again until a thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. And finally, and when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Revelation 27. All right, that's all we got to work with. That's a, that's a sum total of what we got to work with. Once you realize that the book of Revelation does not contain any new doctrine, you should know that by the frequent quotes and references, hundreds of them, to the prophets and to the apostles. No new doctrine is in the book of Revelation. It's actually a book that's disguised, so only the saints know what it's talking about. <laughs> now, some people have taken these texts of Scripture that I've given you, and they have merged it with their ideas and with other Scriptures. For instance, they read first resurrection, and they assume then that there's two resurrections. But in the scripture, first is not a numeric. Yeah, that's right. yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. It's not a numeric designation. That's right. It's a type uh -huh. designation. For instance, you have the old covenant yes. and the new covenant. Uh -huh. They were different kinds of covenants. Yes. The new was a new kind of covenant. Uh -huh. You've got an old man mm -hmm. and a new man. The new man's a different kind of man, not a second old man. Yeah, that's right. You know, the new covenant's not a second covenant like the other one. It's a different kind of, mm -hmm. different kind of covenant. So the first resurrection is a different kind of resurrection than the, when all the dead are going to be raised. See, the first resurrection was a, is a selective resurrection. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So some say, well, the saints are going to be raised first. So I'll see that creates some other, mm -hmm. some other problems because First Corinthians 15 tells you when the saints are raised, death will be destroyed. Yes. There won't be any more death after the saints. Yes. See, but this, but they, they don't, they, they merge these texts with their own ideas. <laughs> they also went, I'll just take a couple of texts here, with Isaiah 65, 19 and 20, this thousand year period. And there it says that the, uh, Age of men will be greatly increased so that a mere child will die at 100 years old. That's what Isaiah said. So they say that during the millennium, people are going to live to be 1,000 years old, and a baby will be 100 years old. See, well, they teach, now this is taught. Maybe it isn't taught before, before you've heard, but it's taught extensively. And they also teach that this period is preceded 
by the removal of the, of the Antichrist, by the removal of the church and the rise of the Antichrist. This in turn is put together with Daniel 8, 9, which speaks of the little horn which waxed great. Mm -hmm. So they conclude during this thousand years, it's, at some point before this Antichrist, the saints are going to be raptured out. Mm -hmm. Then, it's, then all of this is going to happen. They merge, see, they merge this revelation, yeah. this vague text and revelation about a thousand years, and they blend it together with other texts to form a false, uh, false view. It's not possible for the truth of God to be illuminated by human opinion. I want, yeah. I want to make this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I know in theory, everybody, we, we know this in theory. There are a lot of people trying to clear up scripture with their ideas. Uh -huh, yeah. mm -hmm. And revelation cannot be illuminated by the by human ideas. Amen. Those who teach these things would agree with that statement. Uh -huh. Yes. They would agree with that. Yes. They, well, they, they, don't, they, don't, they don't think theirs are human opinions. That's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Because they can't see this this is a great sinkhole in Christendom. Because people can't distinguish between tradition and revelation. Why can't they? they? Because they've been cultured under a religious system that doesn't have the power to do this. So the, the system has produced ignorance. And then on top of that, our current political system as you said, undergirds private opinion right. over everything oh, yes. else. Mm -hmm. So everybody can have their own opinion. It's just as important as anybody else's. Mm -hmm. Now this is how the the brothers were thinking on this same principle. I, go to, I, I took that little rabbit trail to confirm to you that this is a manner that Satan promotes, a manner of thinking that he promotes. To look at a, a real circumstance and assess it after your own assumptions. So thinking that this was true, they sent a messenger to Joseph. I was thinking of the assumptions that's made today uh, in view of Revelation that uh, there's going to be some left and then there's going to be a second resurrection or a second salvation. And that has led to many erroneous um, books, many oh, erroneous yeah. things, and that has led people down... Um, a wrong trail, mm -hmm. and but people have profited by it. So oh, there's yes. you know, Babylon mm -hmm. there, and there's um, the merchants, films, mm -hmm. and there's just millions of dollars just because of this erroneous foundation. That I mean, we understand what um, what it's talking about, but uh, just to the common person, they think that revelation is just doctrine. It has to happen this way. No, it's to reveal to those. Who have eyes to see it, such as um, uh, he's going to uh, deliver the saints, um, uh, just as he had delivered a, a, a most uh, not Moses, but um, he preserved uh, Noah out. He those those were the righteous. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, and so he. Has he's going to deliver his, deliver his righteous and he's going to save those, but um, there is just this erroneous vision of this just the whole concept of the rapture today and there's yes. been mm -hmm. a lot of uh, doctrine made out of that. Mm -hmm. You say two be in the field, mm -hmm. yeah. one taken, one left. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two be at the mill, yeah. one taken, one left. Mm -hmm. What well, exactly who was left mm -hmm. in the flood? Yeah. Some were taken. Yeah. Some were left. Who was left? <laughs> it was Noah, like you said. It's Adam and Gomorrah. Some were taken. I say that because these two, these two occasions are cited as a confirmation of what's going to happen when Jesus comes. So then Sodom and Gomorrah, the ones taken were the sinners. The one left was Lot. <laughs> so, so Scripture clarifies these things so you don't know that God's not going to, God is nowhere promised to exempt all of the people yeah. from difficulty. Yeah, that's right. Yes, he did say to a church at Philadelphia, he'd keep them from a trial that's coming upon the face of the whole earth. Mm -hmm. But he told them why, it's because their strength was weak, yeah. because uh -huh. they'd been wore out fighting, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so to speak. 
Well, based on their false assumption, they sent a messenger to, uh, to Joseph. And he told him something that we, did, we haven't read about this before. I'm going to affirm that there's, there's no reason to question what they said. He said, he didn't say our father. <laughs> he said, your father. Did command before he died, saying, So shall you say to Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee, now the trespass of thy brethren and their sin, for they did for they did unto the evil. Now we pray thee, forgive the trespass of the servants of God, of the God of thy father. Now some might raise the question, well, was this a lie? I don't think it was. I think jo Joseph would have known if it was a lie. I think I don't think they had enough nerve to lie at this point. He no, nothing, yeah. not at all. Joseph, a uh, Jacob. Remember when he died, he brought up the sin of Reuben and sin of Simeon and Levi. So I don't doubt that at some point he knew. Earlier he he'd seen Joseph, so he knew he was he knew he hadn't died like mm -hmm. like he thought. So I, I think that, yes, he, he did say this to his brothers. Mm -hmm. Before he left, set this thing straight. Yeah, yeah. Now I will tell you that there are some things that before you die, you've got you to set them straight. Yeah, amen. That's right. You've got to set them straight. There's That's things right. like this. Sometimes it, it can prove kind of embarrassing, mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of embarrassing, but you've got to do it because amen. you're going to face God. The best policy is not to do things that you have to... Yes. Go back and recant. Right. So they said, forgive. Forgive, forgive us. Mm -hmm. We pray, we pray you, forgive us. Now, the sin they're talking about mm -hmm. took place 39 years ago. Yeah. Uh -huh. 39 years before this, mm -hmm. this took place. Mm -hmm. So whatever, whatever 39 or 40 is in 2016, you can imagine bringing something like that up. Hmm. Saying, you know, doubt, you know doubt, remember that hmm. <laughs> back there in 1960, was it 1960-something, you say, whoa, that's how long this had haunted these men. Mm -hmm. The way the transgressors hard now, yeah, this had haunted these men 39 years later. Right. Hmm. They bring it up. Amen. Now, hmm. before this event, Earlier, Joseph had said to them, God sent me before you to preserve a posterity, preserve you a posterity in the earth, and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now it was not you that sent me hither, but God, and hath made me the father to Pharaoh and the Lord of all his house and a ruler throughout the land of Egypt. That's the 45th chapter. He told them this several, year, several years before this. He told them this, so, but they'd forgot it. That was about 17 about 17 years. See, Jacob, that was at the beginning when they first come into Egypt, yeah. uh -huh. and Jacob lived 17 years in Jacob. So that was about 17 years before. Hmm. But see, sinners forget. That's right. Oh, yeah, sinners forget. Don't bank on sinners remembering. Yeah. They, it would be stirred up yeah. once in a while, but see, yeah. they don't remember it long enough to do something about it. If Satan didn't get, Satan doesn't mind you remembering your sin. If you just don't remember it long enough to right. do something about it, mm -hmm. repent of it. So they'd forgot it. By nature, flesh by nature forgets precious revelations. Mm -hmm. Reverts back to the flesh. Yeah. The brothers had recalled the trespass close to 20 years earlier when Joseph first told them to bring Benjamin. Remember, and they first... It's because of what we did to Joseph. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. When the, when Joseph pled with us, remember, we all oh, we didn't pay. Oh, this see, so this is, this has popped up every once in a while. These are yeah. these are divine remembrances. See, right. yeah. God's prodded him yeah. to remember. Amen. He would he wouldn't let him forget. See, God won't let a sinner totally forget. Yes, amen. Maybe it'll be in their sleep. Maybe at a quiet time. Maybe they're all by themselves. Maybe maybe they're in an accident. Or he'll bring this up. Actually, it could be for a person's salvation to pay attention to it. Yeah. Now the question, we pray thee, we're begging. Now how's Joseph going to respond to this? Because he's got power now. Yeah. Yes. Brother, give him further. 
You know, Jesus was treated this same way. That's right. <laughs> by his brethren. That's right. And by the Romans. And by that soldier that slapped him. That's right. Mm -hmm. And by the ones that pierced him. And by the ones that mocked him. That's and the right. ones that divided his garments right there while That's he was right. suffering on the cross. And they that pierced him are going to see him. That's right. And he's going to be on the throne sitting on judgment on them. Amen. Mm -hmm. See, if you step back far enough, mm -hmm. a lifetime is given to everybody a very length to straighten out all of these Amen. issues that have to do with, me, with them and God. That's right. Like, we got a lifetime to get these things straightened out. Yeah. And, and the devil will try and convince people to procrastinate. Yeah. Say, well, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll get, to that, uh -huh. get to that later. I'm pretty busy right now. But every remembrance is a call. Yeah. Amen. Every recollection yeah, of some, right. something you regret is a summons. It's a call. There's something you can do about it. You can at least say, repent of it again and uh -huh. confess it to God. And Or if you've been forgiven, thank, thank God for the forgiveness. <laughs> yes? I think this is an excellent picture of what can happen to uh, even to believers with a guilty conscience and the memory oh, yeah. of sin. Oh, and yes. Is, now, Joseph's brothers were not in any danger here, really. Mm -hmm. That's but, right. But they thought they, <laughs> they were. Thought yeah. they were. Hey, man. It, it is possible for believers to have a to be in a place where you feel condemned. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have to rehearse the gospel. Amen. That's one of the ministries Amen. of the Lord's table. Mm -hmm. Amen. Is to call to remembrance that, that Christ has taken away our sins. Mm -hmm. And the further away you get from the gospel, the more guilty you tend to feel Amen. before God. And then people, of course, will go to other... People will resort to other things to try to get rid of that guilt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh yeah. They'll mm -hmm. say, well, i got to be more religious, or i got to work mm -hmm. harder, or something like that. Just like the brothers here, they resorted to this, this desperate message mm -hmm. to try to resolve themselves of this guilt, when in fact, actually, Joseph had already forgiven them. Amen. Yep. Amen. Amen. This is one of the valuable ministries of the Assembly of the Righteous. Very right. valuable ministry. Yes. Uh, now, uh, they were moved by their feeling of jeopardy, to be sure. Mm -hmm. But they also, in their confession, saw the wickedness of their deed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, it wasn't just one or the other. One moved them to the other. Mm -hmm. Amen. And... Whenever, whenever these times occur, and and we feel the the regret, it, and God is giving us repentance for things that we could just bury if if we weren't tender about things. But this is like God bringing it up to us, mm -hmm. so that a work can be done in us, so that the situation can be addressed, but also that we can be addressed in it and not be left the same manner of person that committed it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now this, uh, in touching upon Joseph's response, some of the versions, they s said they sent a messenger. Yeah. And so they depict the brothers as being separate from the situation. Yeah. But I don't think this was the case because it says here, when they, when they That's right. yeah. begged him so that I'll mention this a little later, but all of the brothers came and then someone stepped forward to yeah, uh -huh. deliver this message. Yeah. And upon delivering the message, then they, yeah. so they were, they were all there because he heard, he heard uh, them. Mm -hmm. Joseph wept when they spake unto him. Now I want to share with you some of the other versions, what they say. Here's the NIV. When the message came to him, he, he says, when they spake. He says, when the message came to them, Joseph wept. Basic Bible English says that these words, Joseph was overcome with weeping. Joseph wept when their message came to him. When Joseph heard this, he wept. Joseph cried when he got their message. Joseph wept while they spoke to him. When they said this to him, Joseph broke out in tears. 
When this message was reported to him, Joseph wept. Joseph wept at the message they sent. These are different translations to him. Joseph was in tears as they spoke to him. Joseph weepeth in their, in their speaking unto him. When Joseph read the message, he broke down and cried. That message made Joseph very sad and he cried. Joseph wept when they talked to him and Joseph wept when they spoke thus to him. So see, there's quite a disparity in the, <laughs> in the versions. Some say that he read it, you know, they weren't there, and others said they were theirs. So I take it they were there. I'm going to proceed with that assumption. They were there. Someone delivered it. That was their manner. Someone would be a spokesman, like the apostles preached at Pentecost. And Peter, he was the official spokesman. He stepped forward and spoke for them. Well, his brethren also went. That is, they come close. There's something to see there. At this point, their conscience was so tenderized they couldn't stand at a distance yeah, amen. anymore. They had, to, mm -hmm. they had to come close. They came close and they fell down before his face and behold, said, Behold, we be thy servants. Now, yes. Thinking these men, we know what they had done to, to Joseph out of anger years and years before. And now their fear, I, I think it may have been maybe partially motivated by thinking that they were, that Joseph was like they were. Oh, yes, it was. Amen. And they, they may have still harbored some, some envy and anger over, over the whole scenario. Even though mm -hmm. Joseph had saved them alive, there may have still been some envy mm -hmm. in, in these people. And I think that, uh, that is seen in a lot of unregenerate people. They think like everybody else is like them. Yes. And yes. The, the unregenerate mind just can't imagine someone that would actually forget <coughs> or someone that would actually be born again. Someone that actually have newness of life and not yeah. not think like they used to. Mm. Think it's all just a show and things like that. They're just like me. Yeah. Yeah. Now Joseph, they bowed down before him. They fell down before his face. Now Joseph's brothers are depicted as bowing before Jacob four other times. This is the fifth time. And I give them there to you. Thus the two, G two dreams Joseph had <laughs> were, were answered five times. Five times they bowed down before him. You remember the dream? It's dreams I list them there for you. Now, this is a type of Christ is seen here. See, what, what, you know, I want you to see, well, I hate to say it that way. I want to share with you is that this is introducing you to a way you think about Christ. This, yeah, is, this is showing you mm -hmm. the way God operates. Mm -hmm. It's ultimately fulfilled in, in Christ. Amen. He's the one everybody's, he tells you ahead of time, everybody's going to fall down before him. Yeah, he yeah. tells you ahead of time now. Mm -hmm. Everybody, just like Joseph, everybody's going to fall down mm -hmm. before him. As the, so Paul talked talk to people who are criticizing one another and judging one another. Mm -hmm. He said, why dost thou judge thy brother? Mm -hmm. Why dost thou set thy, at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Mm -hmm. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. See, but a lot of people do not believe that. Yeah, that's right. Yes, they believe it as a creed. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't say that'll never happen. Mm -hmm. But they, that's how they live. They live as though that's not going to happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, given him a name that, which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, things on earth, things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus, so there's not there's not any chance that this won't happen. But th this is not preached very much now, brethren. This is not preached very much. A lot of uh, Christians have very rarely heard this message. Although if you ask them, they they know enough to say, well, yeah, that's in the Bible, you know. But yeah, I tell you, if you're convinced of this. 
It'll change the way you live. Amen. Not the slightest chance this won't happen. He set him at his own right hand, far above all principality and power. See, it should happen. Because he, he has actually been exalted above everything else. So everyone else should bow to him. Because he's been exalted. He's the king of kings. And he's ascended far, far above all heavens. He presently is upholding all things by his power, and all by him all things consist or are held together. And so it's it shouldn't surprise us that every knee is going to bow to him. Of course it is. Now, if you do it here, you'll do it joyfully there. See? Yeah, amen. If you don't do it here, it'll mean damnation there. It says that everything was made by him, through him, and, and for him. him. For yeah, him. Amen. amen. Well, let's take this a little, uh, a little further. Moses declared this same thing to Pharaoh. Here's what he said. Against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that ye may know how that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. Oh, boy, that's good stuff. And all these thy servants shall come do down unto me and bow down themselves to me. That's what Moses said. That's what he, what he told them. And they did. Job's criticizing friends. They had to honor him. Here's what God said that we dedicate this to people that say Job sinned. Mm -hmm. I disrespectfully dedicate this text to them. The Lord said to Eliaphaz the Temanite, My wrath is kindled against thee and against thy two friends. For ye have not spoken of me the thing that is right as my servant Job did. Therefore take unto you now seven bullocks and seven rams and go to my servant Job and offer up there for yourselves an offering and my servant Job shall pray for you for him I will accept. Yeah. See? Now you can afford to live for that day. You, when you are tempted to take vengeance yourself you can afford to live yes, amen. for that day. Yeah. And what can we say about Haman? Yeah. Oh Haman who criticized Mordecai and sought to kill him and all the Jews because Mordecai wouldn't bow down before him. Uh -huh. Then took Haman the apparel and the horse and arrayed Mordecai and brought him out on horseback through the street of the city. Haman did this to Mordecai who he tried to kill and proclaimed before him, Thus shall it be done unto the man whom the king delighteth to honor. He had to do it. That's right. He had to come out publicly <laughs> and admit this. God promised that Israel would be honored. Mm -hmm. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lift up my hand to the Gentiles and set my standard to the people, and they shall bring their sons, thy sons, and their arms, and their daughters shall be carried upon their shoulders, and kings shall be thy nursing fathers, and queens thy nursing mothers. They shall bow down unto thee with their face toward the earth and lick up the dust of thy feet. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. What about those that arrested and beat Paul over there in Macedonia? They finally found out they were Romans and frightened him. They had to get him out of prison. Uh, he said, you have beaten us openly, condemned us being Romans, and have cast us into prison. Now do they thrust us out privately, privately? Nay, verily, let them come themselves and fetch us out. And the sergeants told these words unto the magistrates, and they feared when they heard that they were Romans and they came and besought them and brought them out and desired them to depart from the city. See, they had to. Yeah. <laughs> you can afford to wait. Yes. Amen. What about this promise to the suffering church of Philadelphia? Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Yeah. Don't think for one minute that that's not going to happen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It is. Well, that servant said, Behold, our, the brother said, Behold, we be thy servants. Some might have think that Joseph's brothers could appeal to him on the basis that they were his brothers. Look, 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 Joseph. 
Blood's thicker than water, right? We're your own brothers. They don't, they, they don't make an appeal on that basis at all. Because Joseph, he's the, he's the governor of Egypt. They can't make an appeal. Gee, you can't make an appeal to a higher authority on the basis of a lower relationship. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Okay, you can't do that. Yeah. Doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And they're standing before the king of, king of Egypt. Mm -hmm. So now what's Joseph say? He's, they're in his hand. Mm -hmm. He says, fear not. Yeah. Don't be afraid. These must have been words of some relief. I don't question that it didn't cause them to cease trembling. Fear not. What these words were actually calculated to do was to induce sober consideration. As a fear not, when some man of God or God himself or Jesus says fear not, it doesn't mean take it easy. That's what it means. It says, think. Yeah. Assess this situation with me in the middle of it. Yeah. Uh -huh. that's, what that, that's what fear not means in, in Scripture. There's no cause for, to fear me punishing you. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure they were keenly aware of the fact that he could have. I'm not like you, he's saying. I'm not like you. When I was young and tender, huh? see, you, you bullied me tried to kill me, threw me in a pit. Now I got I got more power now than you than you had then. Yeah, but right. fear not. Right. Fear not. Am I in the place of God? Mm. What a statement. Considering that he didn't have a Bible, yeah, considering yeah. the law hadn't been yeah. given, you know, considering how abbreviated his exposure to God was. Am I in the place of God? He knew a lot about God. Yeah. Yeah. Which means every time God makes himself known, if it's in a thunderclap, there's a lot to be learned. A lot to be learned by it. Mind the place of God. Two things I can see here. There may be more. Joseph knew very well that his position was one gain, was not one gained by military strength. He couldn't force himself in this situation. He'd acted, he was acting for Pharaoh, yeah. and you can't take your position before Pharaoh and use it for personal mm -hmm. matters. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, knew, he knew that. Joseph didn't give me all this power so I could like push yeah. myself up to the top. Am I in a place of God? I'm a servant too. I'm a servant to Pharaoh though. Yeah. It happens that I'm a servant as a king. And second, Joseph knew probably by, more by intuition than by revelation mm -hmm. that vengeance belongs to God. Yeah. No man has a right mm -hmm. to take vengeance on someone that's wronged them, mm -hmm. no matter how bad the wrong is. Mm -hmm. They don't have a right because God's went on record. Vengeance is mine, I will repay. Amen. Saith the Lord, told Moses that. Paul quoted it. Vengeance is mine, I'll repay, saith the Lord. To Moses, he said to me, belongeth vengeance and recompense. Long after Moses, David said, O Lord, to whom vengeance belongeth. O God, to whom vengeance belongeth. Mm -hmm. Nahum wrote, God is jealous, the Lord repent, and the Lord repenteth. The, the Lord repenteth and is furious. The Lord will make vengeance on his adversaries. See, the, oh, this is all the way made known. So a person has got to be able to judge, Amen. have I offended God? Did the decision I make, the way I live, the words I said, the course of life I chose, did that offend God? A person has to yes. address this in this life and, and resolve it. You don't want to wait till the day of judgment. Amen. And, and if you do resolve it, then the vengeance you escape you're not appointed to, to wrath. You'll escape the, yes. the vengeance part. God's so great that those close to him, just his presence reveals himself yeah. uh -huh. to some extent. Yeah. Just the fact that Joseph had dealings with God, just those dealings that were very small in, in quantity, 
in nature compared to what's in Christ. But that that still left this impression upon mm -hmm. upon Joseph. What it seems it is that some professing Christians see demons, even demons, bow before Jesus. It's, it's a shame that some professing Christians know less about God and Christ than demons do. Yeah. Amen. Is that not a pitiful, yeah. pitiful circumstance? But it exists. Then he goes over this. But as for you, <laughs> yeah. he's not, he's not going to wreak vengeance, but he's not going to let them forget what they did as for you. They did have intentions. Yes. They were aggressive to carry them out. As for you, it's God's manner to be specific now. Mm -hmm. Adam and Eve, he pointed out, he's specific. Yeah. Did you eat the fruit of the tree? Mm -hmm. He's specific with Cain. Mm -hmm. blood's, blood, your brother's blood's crying out to me from the ground. Yeah. He's specific with Israel. You brought forth sour grapes. You know, Ananias the fire, he spilled it out. You lied to the Holy Spirit. Church of Corinth, he said, there's divisions among you. Church of Galatia, you soon you soon left him that called you into the grace of Christ. Church at Ephesus, you left your first love. Church at Pergamos, you know, you allowed false teaching. Church of Thyatira, a lot of false prophets. Church of Sardis, you're dead. Church of Laodicea, you're lukewarm. See, God faces the person with what they did. Amen. And the Holy Spirit God nails it in their conscience. He convicts of sin. Now, I regret to observe this, but I think a lot of preaching nullifies the convicting ministry of the Holy Spirit. It's like a, like a sympathy for sinners. Feel sorry for him. Poor girl, she's only 13, she's pregnant, poor kid. Poor kid? Poor, poor kid? How old do you have to be to make a decision like that? He, God faces people with their sin. Yeah, that's right. Now, we used to see more of this in uh, churches, people weeping and coming forward and weeping over their sin, just convicted, but it, there's not a lot of that anymore. Yeah. In fact, I would imagine there's some people that probably have never actually seen that take place. I've actually, actually never really seen a person weep because they sin. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. But it's not, it's not common, but that's just because God's not confronted as he should be. Yeah. As for you, now you, you meant evil against me. There was no question what you wanted to do. You weren't trying to bless me. You weren't trying to help me. You weren't trying to benefit me. Your intentions were evil, wicked. Their intention was murder. By divine providence, he stirred him to, to sell him instead. But God, uh, God meant it unto good. Amen. I like the word unto, yeah. you know, in order to. That's right. Good. Now some of the versions, they read quite a bit differently. Here, here's the NIV. God intended it for good. Well, that, that's not bad. But God has given a happy, well, high, happy outcome. That's a basic Bible. God produced something good from it. God planned it for good. That's good. God turned it into good. God disposed it to good. God planned good to come out of it. God took counsel for me for good. God intended it for a good purpose. By God's design, it's been turned out to good. God devised it for good. God turned into good what you meant for evil. But God planned concerning me for good and so forth. So there's two different views presented in these versions. One is... This is how God worked his plan out. The other is God took the, what you did and, and converted it. To, uh, that's the other view. Now that is uh, not a proper view. The purpose of God was established long, long before the events took place. Now the psalmist was inspired to kind of give you an interpretation of what happened. This is Psalm 105, 16. Moreover, he called for a famine upon the land. That's Egypt. He broke the staff of whole bread. God did that. He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant. 
whose feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in iron until the time of that his word came. The word of God, the word of the Lord tried him. The king sit and loosed him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. He made him Lord, as he, capital H, he made him Lord of his house and ruler of all his substance to, to bind his princes at pleasure and to teach his sinners wisdom. Now what happened? The brothers thought they concocted this plan. And Joseph's not saying, yeah, you concocted this plan, but God works them like magic and made it all turn out. Their plan is how God worked the thing out. Just like when Christ was crucified. The Jews thought they did it, but actually God's the one that delivered them up. But he gave, because they wanted to do it, they got the credit just as though, just as though they were totally responsible for it. Now this is a, this is a uh, important point of sound theology. God does not take what men start and finish it. He finishes only what he starts, completes what he starts. It's necessary to see this. When the text states God meant it for good, it does not mean God made their wicked word fit into his plan. I'll just stuff it in there. Rather, the wickedness of the brothers being made to fit into God's plan, it, rather than the wicked purpose of the brothers made to fit in God's plan, it was unknown to them driven by divine purpose. That's... They would not never have volunteered had they known what God was doing. They'd have never volunteered. To, yeah. uh-huh. Or if you're talking about Jesus, had they known who he was, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Yeah, See? Right. Uh-huh. See? So God, this is how God right. fulfilled his purpose. Amen. Yeah. So I didn't think God did things like that. Well, think again. That's right. This, this is what he did. This Amen. is God's purpose. He, got, he knew he, he had to get Joseph down into Egypt. Because he promised Abraham. Yeah. They were going to be down in a, a land. You could be oppressed by these people for 400 years and come out with a high hand. He promises. So now you had, he gets Joseph down in Egypt. But this is how he got Joseph right. yeah. down into Egypt. And in order f- for Jacob to, and his household to move to, J- to move to Egypt, he had to start out this way to get them eventually to move down himself and, and grow. In order for them to become slaves in Egypt, like he promised, he had to get the ball rolling at this is how how I did it She's, if you can see it Satan really works for God although he does not do it willingly That's right. Amen. Uh-huh. but he works for God yes. you can take Job as an example look how that man has ministered to people for yeah. centuries and centuries uh-huh. and centuries he has ministered to people by what's happened well that sure isn't what Satan had in mind That's but right. that is what God had in Amen. mind the same may be true of you. There are things happen to you. Uh-huh. I've lived long enough now I can kind of look back and see mm-hmm. a pattern of how God worked. Mm-hmm. If he'd have tried to get me to abandon traditional religion just by telling me I ought to abandon it, it I think it would have taken a lot longer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But so, so he made it so I was really uncomfortable in it and yeah. staying in it cause suffering and so, so I can see God in it. I can see how God how God did that. Amen. Some of the versions they don't highlight this. They're affected by an erroneous theology. For instance, basic Bible in English says God has given a happy outcome. So it all it all turned out all right. God produced something good from it. God turned it into good. No, God doesn't turn evil into good. Yes. This view makes God a spectator instead of an initiator. That's right. Uh-huh. Amen. Amen. You can see that, can't you? Yeah. yeah a blessing isn't a converted curse. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Sometimes a blessing is preceded by positioning un- in uncomfortable positions, uh-huh. positioning them. Then he says to them again. Well, the Egyptians, they were, uh, something else I've left out here. The a numerous people were kept alive by the Egyptians in neighboring the Canaanites to the house to report. When they were delivered, you had to have some bases that would report 
to Jericho what <laughs> what had happened. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. The Egyptians were needed to fulfill the promises made to Abraham, so the neighboring countries were needed to report they were. So that when all when all the delivering happened, everything was set up in Egypt to kick them out. Everything is set up for Canaan from Dan or in. The nations are already, already reporting the working of the Lord. See, all that was involved in this. Yeah. Now, the brothers, as I mentioned before, probably thought Joseph was caring for them because of Jacob. Now that Jacob's dead, but he wasn't really, he was caring for them because that's why God raised him up. That's what he told them, he, to save a people alive, yeah. save Israel alive. See. He would not let Israel develop themselves. Mm -hmm. He wasn't just going to let Israel have bumper crops in Canaan and just suddenly grow in Canaan under their own activity. That's, God didn't allow that to happen. Mm -hmm. They grew under oppression, mm -hmm. bad oppression. They expanded. That confirmed God was doing this. Had that done the other way, it wouldn't have been that, yeah. wouldn't have been that clear. Now here's a, an application that in, in the day of salvation there's a manner of thinking that's driven by an awareness and persuasion of the new covenant. Now just as Joseph saw what God was doing it, it drove the way he thought. In the new covenant God shapes the way you think by what you, how you consider the new covenant. For instance, here's some new covenant associations. Associates that are categorically said to be with the New Covenant. Galatians 3.8, the New Covenant is associated with preaching the gospel. Galatians 3.17 and 18, it's equated with the Abrahamic covenant of blessing. Galatians 3.17, it's something that cannot be disannulled. It's associated with the coming of faith, Galatians 3. It's the New Covenant, what he was talking about. It's associated with being brought to Christ. It's associated with being justified with the spirit that gives life, with the ministration of the spirit, with the greater glory, with the ministration of righteousness, with Jesus the surety or guarantee of it. It's associated with God's promises. I won't read the rest of them. Now covenant minded people talk about these things. Right. See if you see these, uh -huh. this, is just, this is not a complete, this is kind of a surface list, but if you see these associations and you are a covenant-minded person, you, you will talk about these yes, things. Amen. You'll mention them. If you're not a covenant-minded person, you won't talk about them. Yeah. Of course, a serious complication has been brought up, brought into the professed church. It has, and this change has come about from its educators, its preachers, and its teachers. They're the ones that have created this situation. Now God's going to hold him responsible and somebody with insight and influence needs to hold her feet to the fire now. Yeah. They are responsible. These churches are the fruitage of preaching and teaching. Amen. That's Amen. why they're the way they are. Yes, right. mm -hmm. Under the administration of these professed leaders, the remarkable ignorance of the new covenant has taken place. Mm -hmm. yeah. huh? For about the past 60, 60 to 70 years, the preaching has shifted, mm -hmm. so the New Covenant is a smaller part of your Bible. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh -huh. The Old Covenant is 75 percent of your Bible. Mm -hmm. That's just that's what I was taught. I remember. I remember it very well. And I remember the day when some a lot of preachers only actually carried a New Testament and they uh -huh. preached from a New Testament. They didn't even have a whole Bible. Uh -huh. And some of the old sectarians they'd criticize us, you know, for that. Said, how do you expect to work for God? You only have part, part, part of your Bible. Yeah. Well, don't fear, he said. Don't, don't fear. Yeah. This was God at work. Mm -hmm. What he was saying was, I see that this was God at work. Yeah. And he comforted them. Uh -huh. He comforted them. Now, a professional counselor might have said, now, listen, listen up, brothers. We've got to get together in a room. We've got to work this thing out. You've been living with this. We gotta, we gotta work this out and discuss this. And a professional legalist would say, "Now we, we, we gotta have a time of confession here. We gotta work it out that way." 
But by way of comparison, Joseph proceeds just as though the thing didn't happen. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Because he saw God was in it. Amen. And he wanted them to see. Amen. That was the only thing that would alleviate their conscience. Yeah. Uh -huh. Although I doubt that it totally did. Mm -hmm. I suppose it's still true that some of the difficulties we encounter from other people could well be the Lord working with us. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> God, we may be so crude as God to use dumb people to get through to us. Oh, yeah, I've experienced this. I know what I'm talking about here. And, uh, baby, you've experienced this. You had some person just got on your case and it irritated you. It's probably God dealing with you because you were a little bit too slow. And here we have, he spake kindly to them. Yes? Not long ago, you taught a lesson on... How we're not to revile dignitaries yeah. put in place. Mm -hmm. This undergirds what you were teaching in that when we see that all that is done is actually the work of God, mm -hmm. then we will not be quick to speak against even those things which are done to us unjustly. Mm -hmm. um, that is not that we become doormats, but that we don't take judgment into our own hands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, like Joseph, he... If he was operating under a, a lower perspective, he he could have easily justified doing harm to his brothers. Mm. But because he saw that even in this, the work of God was being done. Yeah. God had used his brothers as yeah. instruments to work out his own will. It wouldn't. It doesn't make sense by faith to then uh, ridicule that when we see it's it's the Lord who is yes, at work. Amen. And, and these people stand. And God is their judge. Yes, I was going to say in the end, mm -hmm. God, any retribution will be administered by God, yes, amen. not by ourselves. And Brother Gibbon, as we um, are exercise our, our priestly position in Christ, we can actually intercede for people. You know, I, I just met someone and talked to them, and it became very evident. They said they were believers, but they had this hatred for this, this, this woman at the hospital had this hatred for her father. Now, she was, she was taking care of him. He's an old man, and he's mean to her. And I, I listened to her, and I tried to comfort her. I told her, I said, you know, Christ forgave us. He, he's more merciful to us. She said, I know, but he's just an old, ornery, you know. And I said, yeah, I was trying to get her to see yeah. that what, what I understand it's true. He was mean to you. But... See, I, what I wanted her to see is that you really do love him because you take care of him. You really do honor him because you're, t you're doing something for his benefit. But it, I, 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 I'm having to pray for her because she, she didn't really get it. She was just in, yeah. the, in the, in the um, complaining mode, you know. <laughs> but but I, I could see that. This is, you know, he saw it and he wanted them to see it because he knew if they could see it like he did, they would glorify That's God right. too. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And again, see, God's going to settle. God's going to level everything yes. out. Amen. So it's not like this is never going to be addressed. Uh -huh. yes. Amen. You got to be willing to wait. You got to live by hope. See, yeah. you got to live by hope. Yes. You got to be willing to wait. Mm -hmm. Like when he told him, God's going to visit you. Yes. Boy, that's, that's you have to come here. And he spake kindly to him. That's, that's uh, of course, the ministry of Jesus, yes. speaking kindly. There, Isaiah said, uh, Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, saith God, your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, yes. that her iniquity is pardoned. For she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Yeah. Chastening is over. T tell him, tell him. Yeah, there's people you got to tell you yes. it's over now. Amen. It's over. You don't. You, you can. You can enjoy God's comfort. Well, Joseph lived 110 years. You notice how the age of lifespan has been yeah. reducing. Uh -huh. Abraham lived 175. Isaac lived 180. Jacob lived 147. Mm -hmm. Joseph lived 110. See, so the age. Is, is dropping down a little level off of three score and ten by reason of strength four score that's the got kind of the average mm -hmm. 
Now, I did want to say a word on the God's going to surely visit you. The God's going to visit you. It's going to be at least 400 years because they're going to be oppressed 400 years and that hasn't even started That's yet. Right, yeah. No word that it promised to Abraham has actually come to pass yet. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It's amazing, isn't it? But he's talking just like it's, like it's, it's there already. But faith, that's, if you're going to appeal to faith, you've got to get out of the time zone. Yes, amen. Get, get out of the time zone. Because yeah. faith doesn't think in terms of time. Yeah, amen. So he holds before him something yeah. that the next ten generations will not experience. Uh -huh. Deliverance. The next ten generations are going to live and die in Egypt mm -hmm. under oppression. But he's talking about Amen. the fulfillment of this. Now you have the example of, of Paul mm -hmm. who knew what the best, for, from a personal viewpoint, uh -huh. he knew what the best alternative was. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. Here's how he put it. I'm in a strait betwixt two. I, we'd say I'm cast on the horns of a dilemma. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I don't know what... What to do? I have a desire to depart, which and to be with the Lord, with Christ, which is far better. Which is far better. But nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. Hmm. Even though it's going to involve a lot of suffering. Mm -hmm. See. Now this is living by hope. See. Mm -hmm. Says yes, I prefer to be with Christ. I prefer to go on. But there are some things that God has assigned me to do. Uh -huh. Open men's eyes, turn them from darkness to light, the power of Satan unto God. You know, I, I've been given this word to, work to do, and I, I know I can sense I'm not done yet. Mm -hmm. So I do. I'm, I have, sometimes I have to wrestle this out in my mind. Which do I want to do? Do I want to get out of here and be with the Lord? Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's far better, I admit. But uh, then what am I going to leave a mess here behind? And then I, got, then, I, then I haven't been faithful over my stewardship. Uh -huh. Hey. See, you've been you've been employed by God to do something, Amen. Yeah. and you got to address that. You can't afford to leave prematurely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God knows that. Yeah. So here, <laughs> here's a group of people. For 400 years, they just got to keep reminding God's going to visit us. God's going to visit us. God's going to visit us and take yeah. us out of here. Yeah, you won't want to experience it, and your children won't experience it, and your grandchildren won't experience it. It's going to be a long time, but they had to keep that promise alive. Amen. Now, if there's one great prevailing transgression the modern church has presented, it stopped talking about Christ's coming. Yeah. Amen. That is a serious, serious departure. You might say people don't understand it and so forth. I'm preaching about the Antichrist and the rapture. This isn't preaching the coming of the Lord. Amen. That's not what that's preaching. Mm -hmm. The fact that Jesus is coming, he's going to come and take us unto himself. We're going to be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. We're going to ever be a Lord. That's got, we've got to hold that out. Hold that out before the people. And we don't have to say it's going to be a long time. You may never live to see it. That You don't add that to it. Yeah. Amen. Yes. That's right. Amen. 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 Fears, Amen. And this doesn't. Yeah. You can see that, can't you? This, this is becoming more and more clear, more and more clear to me. And here's the the modern church is is like San Ballot and Tobias stand down at the bottom of the wall. Saying, Come down and talk to us for a while. We'll be your friends. We like to worship God too. Come on off the wall. Stop the building for a while. Yeah, he's going to burn yourself out. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be so heavenly mind you know they're good. Come on down and speak with us. Yeah, mm. I said, we're not coming down. Yeah. They were living in the expectation of that wall being finished. Amen. It took a lot of work. Mm -hmm. They weren't thinking, oh, boy, we've been working all these days. And that's not how they thought. Yeah. See, hope will refurbish your strength. Hope will put fire in your furnace, so to speak. Yeah. It'll enable you to go on. See, these people had to live for a long, long time by hope. No, they knew it wasn't going to happen in their day. 
when it's a 400 years of oppression, they knew <laughs> it's not going to happen in our time because the oppression hasn't even started yet. Then after it had been going on for a couple of centuries, they could still say it's not over yet. We've got to live by hope. We've got to think about, got to think about the Lord visiting his people. Amen. So Joseph uh, lived 110 years thinking about this hope. And he saw Ephraim, Ephraim and Manasseh's children. He saw Ephraim's children of the third generation. The text says he saw Ephraim's children of the third generation. Well, I will turn again to the translations to show you how they garble this up. The New American Standard says the third generation of Ephraim's sons the Holman Bible says Ephraim's grandchildren. The Jewish Bible says Ephraim's great-grandchildren. Three generations of descendants of his son Ephraim. The birth of his son Ephraim's children. There's that one. Ephraim's children and grandchildren. During Joseph's life, Ephraim had children and grandchildren, and the third generation of Ephraim's children. So the th different versions present these views. Reckoning from Jacob, the birth of his son Ephraim's children. Reckoning from Joseph, Ephraim's grandchildren. Reckoning from Ephraim, Ephraim's great-grandchildren. So who we reckon is from? From Jacob, from, from Joseph, or from Ephraim? John Gill says he reckons from Ephraim's first child. He refers to his great-grandchildren's children. Pulpit commentary records it from Joseph, Ephraim's great-grandchildren. Keel and Dillitz also reckons it from Joseph, sons of the third link. John Calvin reckons it from Joseph. Well, to make a long story short, it seems to me that it is Joseph because this is an account. Joseph is what he's, the one he's commenting on. And so it's the third generation from Joseph. Ephraim, <coughs> children, grandchildren. Ephraim's children, grandchildren. Three generations yeah. from Joseph. I wouldn't make a test of fellowship of it, but it seems to me that since Joseph is the one being addressed, that's how it'd be. And the children of Manasseh, children of Maker, the son of Manasseh, were brought up upon Joseph's knees. Now here's some interesting trans. These are translations now brought up on Joseph's knees, born on Joseph's knees, placed at birth on Joseph's knees, that is, they were counted for him, came to birth on Joseph's knees, were recognized by Joseph, were counted as Joseph's own, were brought up on Joseph's knees, were adopted by Joseph at birth, were given special inheritance rights by Joseph, were born on Joseph's lap, whom he claimed as his own, who played at his feet, were born upon Joseph's thighs, were born on the sides of Joseph. He welcomed them into the family and were also recognized as Joseph. Well, see, it's no wonder people have trouble yeah. understanding the scriptures. Yeah, really. I would, I don't believe that it would be of note to say they were born, although I guess that was a custom, but this, this doesn't seem to blend in with the text. Mm -hmm. The idea is that Jacob was the last of the fathers to whom these promises were personally addressed. And he had already taken these, Manasseh and Ephraim were counted his children, remember? He adopted them as his children. So what this means, as I see it, is that he would tutor these, third, these three generations. He would tutor them in the promises and acquaint them with the promises of God and the covenant God made with Abraham. So they are brought up under his tutelage it isn't that Joseph, he knew a lot about it, but not as much as, not as, much as uh -huh. Jacob knew, uh -huh. knew about it. So he was taught by Jacob, and then he communicated what Jacob taught him. Then he tells him, God will surely, I die, I die. Fact of death, I die. He, uh, he sensed it some way. So only two people didn't see death in the... One was Enoch, yeah. he did not see death, and the other was Elijah who was carried up into heaven in a fiery chariot. Uh -huh. 
Jesus did die, but he was ascended up in the sight of his apostles. So in all three ages, before law, during law, after law, we have a testimony that there's a place after death. Amen. Yes. There you go. <laughs> we got three members yep. went from here to there. Mm -hmm. Isn't that good? Every, every age had a, had a witness. Mm -hmm. Now when, when Abraham died, it's just written, just simply written, then Abraham gave up the ghost and died in a good old age, old, old man, and so forth. When I, he didn't say anything. When Isaac died, it was written, and Isaac gave up the ghost and died, was gathered unto his people, didn't say anything. When Joseph died, it is written, and Israel said unto Joseph, Behold, I die, but God shall be with him. He said something and blessed all, the, yeah. all of his sons. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he's the last one that had this direct communication That's right. Amen. he could most fully and he just dis he distributed it they had to keep this alive see until until the coming of moses they had to keep this yeah, that's right. keep this alive mm -hmm. so he had a lot to say before he died mm -hmm. for that reason not because he was superior but mm -hmm. because he had the greater volume because isaac received some and then jacob receives a little bit more mm -hmm. and he passed it on to his children Everything Jacob said had to do with the covenant. When he blessed his sons, it was not, you'll be wealthy and so forth. Otherwise, it's all in view of the covenant. Mm -hmm. All the blessing was in view of the covenant that God made with Abraham. God will surely visit you. <clears throat> now again, the various versions come present their offering to us. God will surely take care of you. God will surely come to your aid. God will surely come to you. God will keep you in mind. Surely he will remember you. He'll certainly inspect you. But God will surely come and get you. God will certainly provide for you. Visiting will visit you. God will most certainly pay you a visit. Well, that's not satisfactory. I'm, I'm the word visit does have those different kind of meanings. I give you what the lexical meaning of visit is. But when he said visit, well, here's what the visit con consisted of. Mm -hmm. First, the judgment of the oppressing nation. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Israel came out, yeah. and Israel came out with great substance. Yeah. Yeah. That's what this visit yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> accomplished. Yeah. This was a promise and a prophecy of the deliverance of Israel from Egypt. It wasn't just like, he'll take care of you. Don't worry. Even though you're being oppressed, you'll, you'll have plenty to eat. And that's not what he was saying. That's right. The visitation was actually an overthrow of Egypt's gods. Yes. Uh -huh. It was encapsulated in ten plagues. And the deliverance came at a precise time when it was appointed. Now, all of that was called a visit. Amen. That's right. It was not a time of inspection. See, one version said, he'll inspect you. Uh -huh. yeah. That must have been comforting on God. Looks... It was not a casual visit at all. Yeah. The visit spelled an end of 400 years yeah. of oppression. He'll bring you out of this land that he did. All right, he says, uh, I'm going to take an oath now from you. You've got to promise me you're going to do this. Take an oath. God will surely visit you. He mentions it again. God will surely visit you. And you shall carry up my bones from hence. Took an oath from the children. Yeah. Even though the children he's telling us to are not going to participate in his visitation. See? Uh -huh. Nor are their sons, nor their sons' sons, nor their sons' sons' sons down to the tenth generation. Uh -huh. They had to so put this down someplace, yeah. pass this word along someplace. Amen. Take my bones yes. out of here. Carry my bones out of here. Amen. This means the culture of Israel was completely different mm -hmm. from any other nation. They trusted in something that they were not experiencing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See? Yeah. 
No other nation is like that. It was all a here and now, here and now, here and now. Idols never talk about what will be, what will be, what will be. They always talk about what is. And the more religion talks about what is, the more idolatrous it is. Carry my bones from hence. Well, they embalmed him and put him in a coffin, but you know they actually did do this. 400 years, over, over 400 years later, on the night they came out of Israel, out of Egypt, Moses took the bones of Joseph with him. Now, do you think you could remember a detail like that during a momentous occasion like that? See, this tells you something about faith. You got, you got three plus million people coming out at midnight with all their possessions, all their flocks, all their herds, all their children. And Moses remembers this detail. Get the bones of Joseph. For he straightly had sworn straightly the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and ye shall carry up my bones away hence with you. For 400 plus years, that saying was kept alive among the Israelites. This could not happen in today's church. Impossible. This could not happen in today's church. They could not keep an unwritten promise that long. They haven't been able to keep written promises yeah. just a few years. Yeah. See, why? Why were they able to keep it? This was a specially cultured nation. Yes, With all of their faults uh -huh. and all of their failings, they could be trusted to keep this word. Yes. When Moses wrote his word, they kept that word, yeah. that writing. They kept it. Living by faith. Hmm. And then uh, after they got to Canaan, after some months, Joseph buried the bones in, in Canaan, just like he said. Here's what it says in Joshua 24, 32. And the bones of Joseph, which the children of Israel brought up out of Egypt, buried they in Shechem, in a parcel of land which Jacob bought of the sons of Hamer, the father of Shechem, for a hundred pieces of silver, and it became the inheritance of the children of Joseph. Amen. Amen. He didn't have any means... To Notepads, yeah. iPads, whatever. Yeah. They didn't have anything like that. They yeah. just had their minds. Right. Yeah. But if you can get something in the people's mind, yeah. Amen. it can pass from one generation yeah. to another. Amen. But if this thing isn't in their minds, there'll be generations that'll lose it. That's right. It's, it's got to be the way you think. Mm -hmm. You yeah. can't. Like when you come to quote, come to church, this is not the place to think differently than you think any place else. You have to think in the same manner with the same foundational things. You're just applying it. You're concentrating more, and you have less distraction. But there's a crying need for this, brethren. In our age, there's a crying need for a thinking Christian populace. And right now, we don't have such a thing. There are some people, God, we're, we're not saying these kind of people don't exist, but they're the oddballs. They're the people that don't fit in. They don't make leaders out of these people. But God does. Some commentators are persuaded the deliverance took place 200 years after the burial of Joseph. In fact, I'll give you a quote out of the NIV Bible. Quote, Joseph's body remained in Egypt until the exodus to the promised land of Canaan about 200 years later. Oh, yeah. I guess they forgot about that 400 years of bondage. Of course, some people reckon the 400 years, they say they were actually in Egypt only 250 years. You'd be surprised if people say this. Only 250 years of that 400 years goes back to when Egypt, when Abraham went down into Egypt the first time. But they forget this oppression. <laughs> it was 400 years of oppression and slavery. And there in Exodus 12, when they came out, it says the self same day, the 430 years, yeah. uh -huh. it, they tell you. Yeah. So, you know, this, yeah. 
religious traditions, they're terrible. They, well, they embalmed, yes. Yeah, this, this idea of Israel keeping alive these promises. <coughs> when, you under, when you see this in Genesis, you, you begin to understand how potent it was mm. when the apostles began to preach the gospel. Yeah, because yeah. they categorically told the Jewish people, the promises God made to the fathers, he yeah. has fulfilled Amen. in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. And yet, but if you, see, you can't really understand the gospel yeah. unless you understand about these promises That's made right. to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Uh -huh. Amen. Mm. That's good. Mm -hmm. You know, these promises also had to be in, as, as well as in the minds of the people, it had to be in their heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They right. had to love what they were looking for. That's right. Mm -hmm. And I was considering the, the more time went on that when they were in oppression and the, the longer they were there, the more precious this mm -hmm. promise was going mm -hmm. to be. Yeah, to that's, them. Right. that's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Well, he embalmed him and put him in the coffin mm. to wait. Put him in a coffin to wait. Now it mentions they they embalmed the body, uh -huh. but it says they transported the bones. Yeah. Why did why did they do that? Because the flesh and blood wasn't there. Yeah. Uh -huh. See, the body is flesh and blood. It was it had been chemically solidified, but it wasn't flesh and blood. All it really was left was bones. Yeah. He didn't mean it like when you open the coffin, it isn't that you see a, a skeleton there. That's not what he was saying. So that's, yeah. that's really all there was. That other was just a, was just a, a case. That's all that was. Uh -huh. His bones. This indicates that the years came and went. There was much thought about being in the promised land. Yeah. It must have talked about it. They that fear the Lord spake often with them, one with another in Isaiah's day. They must have done so in Egypt. Remember, yeah. boy, this promise is going to come true. Talked about it. See, the people of God, we commend them for talking about the promises, Amen. putting one another in mind yes. of them. When you come together, let's don't gripe, let's promise. Yeah. You know? Talk about the promise. If someone has a hardship come upon them, let's match it with the promise. Yeah. We don't, we don't discourage people from reporting hardship. Uh -huh. we, we do want to know and pray about it, but we're going to match it with a promise. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us about your trouble, we'll match it with a promise. Yeah. And not leave you thinking just about the trouble, uh -huh. but about the promise. And when you hear that, don't think we're ignoring the trouble. Yeah. We're not ignoring the trouble. That's We've right. been in trouble. We know what it's like. Uh -huh. <laughs> we know what it's like with this promise. It'll keep you. Amen. So there's a lot to be learned. If the people of God are going to survive their tenure in the world, they've got to be ready for the coming of the Lord. Yes. Well, this, uh, as far as the text is concerned, this ends the book of Genesis, written by Moses, mm -hmm. long after everything in it. Yeah. Moses lived after everything that's recorded yeah. in this book. Uh -huh. <laughs> he isn't born until Exodus, the next book. By inspiration, which means this is what God wanted the people to know. Amen. This is what he wanted them to know. Yes. A detailed account of things that happened almost 2,500 years before Moses lived. Mm. And you know, considering that, there are a lot of details here. Uh -huh. yeah. Considering that. But we're introduced to God himself. We're introduced to the devil as well. We learn about God the Creator and man the sinner. We're exposed to how God would bring the Savior into the world mm -hmm. and the people among whom He'd be raised and nurtured. The nature and seriousness of sin is delineated in Genesis. Mm -hmm. We're introduced to the promises of God, how God motivates His people with them, the warnings of God, the wrath of God, we're introduced to it there. Mm -hmm. We've been exposed to faith book of Genesis. Mm -hmm. We've also been introduced to how it works in men. Mm -hmm. Divine election and providence were introduced to it in, mm -hmm. in Genesis. What a grand book it is, isn't it? Amen. I thank God for the book of Genesis. I, I regret that in my earlier life I'd I didn't pay as much attention to it. I wish I, I wish I would have. But this is something, a legacy you can pass on to your children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
you can uh, train them up in the words of the Lord in the book of Genesis and children like exciting things well there's some pretty exciting things in the book of Genesis you, you <laughs> it'll capture their attention God will work through it. Any of you have a word you'd like to say tonight, Brother Ricky? Joseph was such a marvelous example of the sanctifying power of mm -hmm. promises. <laughs> yes. He's among those in Hebrews 11 and said they saw the promises afar off, oh. mm -hmm. and they were persuaded of them and embraced them mm. yes. and confessed that they were strangers on yeah. the earth. Mm -hmm. and Joseph lived most of his life in Egypt, but he never became an Egyptian. Amen. In his heart. Amen. Right. Amen. Tell it. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> he was looking for that better country. Yes, Amen. Yes, Isaac. Um, Brother Gilman, you were um, recounting the uh, account of any comfort to his uh, brothers, and then you uh, touched on the kindness of our Savior. I couldn't help but think of the kindness of our Savior that he's given us many provisions and blessings to hold on to, just as um, the, yeah. the uh, Hebrews held on to the hope, the Lord has given us many provisions and promises Amen. that um, you're not out of the woods yet, but there is a better horizon up ahead. If you Amen. stay with me, and I will provide for you Amen. as long as you stay with me. <laughs> All blessings and spiritual yeah. places. Yeah. 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 yeah, I couldn't help but think of Ephesians 2, 3, uh, 1 through, which says, yeah. Yes, uh, Bless set us, us in heavenly, has, ra has raised us up from the dead uh, mm -hmm. to set us in heavenly places in Him. Yes. And that's where all our provisions are. You stay in Christ, you stay in the Spirit. Amen. And, uh, you can never fail. And because of the kindness of our Savior, uh, He always gives us the provisions that we need. Amen. 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 It's not a starvation diet either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Amen. I just did a quick check of Hebrews 11. We have 40 verses in it. Yeah. 20 of those verses yeah. are referring to gen the Genesis record. Yes. 20 of the 40 yeah. verses yeah. in what we call the faith yeah. chapter yeah. Uh -huh. are referring to Genesis. From Genesis. Yeah. It's a foundational. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Verses 3 through 22. Mm -hmm. you got to... It's true, you kind of have to kind of read through the, between the lines. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot there that's made known in these that's right. historic examples. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's quite, a, that's quite an observation right there, yeah. Brother Gene just gave us. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Yes. Now, you said you're going to have some more lessons to kind of summarize. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah, next time, I forgot what I called it. Yeah, apostolic expressions founded on Genesis. Then I got two or three other yeah. summations. Mm -hmm. But I want to I want to show that the next uh, time how that the building blocks for sound reasoning are established in Genesis. Yeah, that's right. Brother, you've been teaching from Genesis for more than three years. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Two yeah. lessons yeah. every other week. Twenty-six yeah. lessons a year. Mm -hmm. It doesn't doesn't seem like it, does it? Doesn't yeah. to me anyway. Does no. It doesn't seem like it. Amen. We're not done yet. No. Not done yet, yeah. No. <laughs> I remember when we first set out it was quite a quite an ag aggressive assignment. Fifty <laughs> fifty chapters. Yeah. Took me some time to Good. Good. Yes, the, took me some time to work out with the Lord like how I was going to approach the thing. Mm -hmm. You could have been in 15 years in it, you yeah, know, if you, yeah. but then you would have missed yes. it. It's a lot. I, I knew I had to uh -huh. approach it so you could stimulate recollection and memory yeah. and see principles. Yeah. Amen. But it is uh, the writ and written 25, yeah. then 2,500 years, yeah. 20, year 2,500. <laughs> That's how close Moses was to God. I mean, yeah. God to reveal all of this. Yes, Brother Dave. Uh, I noticed throughout this, uh, <clears throat> and especially hit me tonight when you were talking about uh, how Moses remembered the bones of Joseph. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. there's, there's a vast difference between a people who are cultured by God 
Amen. Amen. Yes, Brother Judah. Just as the Israelites remembered Joseph as they moved toward the promised land, we must remember Jesus as we move toward right. our promised yes. land. Yes. Right. He's, the, he's the one. We're going there because he's there. That's what makes heaven what it is to us. Amen. And if we fix our eyes on him, then we'll be good. Amen. See that the, the, fact, the fact that they for uh -huh. 400 years, that opens up what living by hope is. There's yes. this flesh is fleshed out in human experience there. That people that didn't actually see it and didn't actually participate in it bodily still live by hope of it. Yes. And that's, that's the way it is with us in the coming to the Lord. There's yeah. A better, there's a better way to say what I said. Yeah, if you keep your eyes fixed on Him, then you're renewed every day. Every yeah. day. And Amen. you're able to do it again. Amen. Yes, sister. And this is what living by faith is. I mean, it's mm -hmm. real. It, 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 Amen. It's real. So as you live by faith your whole life, like you said, it that's what it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't come to the meeting and you're one way and you go home and it's something else. Your whole life is lived by faith. Mm -hmm. So as you pass this down through the generations, it's real. This is their life. So mm -hmm. that's how they were able to pass this along. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Believers do not live in the reality of certain circumstances and, That's right. and things that we experience yeah. on the earth. Mm -hmm. Believers live in the reality of their hope. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Uh -huh. That's it. Amen. 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 Right. Tonight, you might find it fairly easy to talk about these things, but it won't be long until you'll see that you got to fight to maintain Amen. this. To maintain this, there's a there are all kind of influences to, to make you, to bring you down into the here and now, and and you have to deal with the here and now, but you have to deal with it from up here. <laughs> yes. That's why it's important for us to have testimonies among ourselves too. So yes. like, if you do oh, yeah. get in that, then uh -huh. we can see each other living out our lives by yeah. faith, and it can yeah. strengthen us. Yes. Amen. Sometimes. The testimony of people will will, ident will identify what you yourself have experienced. Yes, that's right. That you did, that you missed it, but uh -huh. yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh -huh. All right, I think we'll have a word of prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this, the book of Genesis, and for Moses, the man of God, Moses. If we have ever not given him due honor. We repent of it, Father. We're, we're grateful for the way you used him, for the record of the experiences of the fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and then Joseph. He's given us much to think upon, and we thank thee for it. In Jesus' name, amen.